What's that? You want to see a video in which your old pal Zeke screws up for once with what he originally thought was an incredible plan spectacularly blowing up in his devilishly handsome face? Oh, hello! I'm using the background made of internets again today because you guys in the comments seem to really like it the first time round. It is really mesmerising. Here in the UK we've got a number of what they call newspapers. One thing they've got in common is they're all definitely made of paper but it might be a little stretch to say that they all contain news. While the mainstream publications concern themselves with covering boring stuff, like the actual news, there are a few tabloids that have put themselves at the cutting edge of journalism by pioneering a new and trailblazing technique. Publishing any old sensationalist crap. It's fine, all well and good, that's how the world works. But I did notice one quirky thing in particular, and once I noticed it the first time, I couldn't stop noticing it. It got to the point where I felt like I'd discovered some kind of secret journalistic society. Every now and then I'll walk into a shop and notice that a few of the tabloids are running the same story on the front page. And they'll reprint this story every few months without fail. Giant rats are attacking England. Not only that, but every time they reprint it, the rats are getting bigger and bigger. Invasion of the German rats! Giant rats invade Big Brother House! Mutant killer rats target our MP! Mutant rats in your kebab! Plague of giant rats in Britain! Red capital letter giant mutant rats on way to UK! Plague of new giant super rats! They're getting closer! Mutant rats could grow to the size of sheep! Monster rats the size of cows! Firstly. What about the R.O.U.S.'s? Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. So what I wanted to discuss- hang on, what? Rats the size of cows? Did they really print that? Oh, you guys, that's brilliant! <laughs> let me- hang on, let me fix your headline for you. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, oh, anyway, here's where I come into the story. Now, look, you guys know that I always strive to be 100% straight with you. And as I conduct my YouTube activities, I try and do so with grace and humbleness. So, right off the bat, I'm just going to level with you. I'm a genius, and sometimes my stratospherically high-reaching thoughts are too massive in their scope, and they end up collapsing under the weight of their own brilliance. Here's what went wrong. Now, a lot of you know that uh, my cat sadly died a few weeks ago, and I wanted to immortalise her. And I thought, what better parting gift than to eulogise her in the national press? God, what was I thinking? I also thought it'd be cool to test just how obsessed the British tabloids are with giant rat stories. Oh God, what was I thinking? I wrote a little bit of a yarn about how I'd found and photographed a gigantic rat in my kitchen before my brave kitty chased it out of the house. I described how the rats were getting bigger and bigger over the course of the last few months and the cat was having a field day killing them and bringing them in. Here's a picture of one of her previous catches that I photoshopped <coughs> took, uh, just as a, as a little sample of my wares, an aperitif to see if anyone would uh, be interested in the main course of my rodent feast. I sent the email over to a few newspapers and within 15 minutes I had a nibble. A picture editor by the name of Olivia from a newspaper that I'm not going to name wanted to see the big one. And this is what I sent her. Are you ready? Don't laugh. Here we go. Oh, I mean, obviously it's different when you know it's a Photoshop job, but it is an amazing one at that. I mean, look at the way its paws curl over the, the sink there and the way its butt reflects in the glass. I'm awesome, but come on, there is no way she is going to buy that. Oh. Oh, she's still on the line here, but quite rightly a little bit sceptical and wants to see more images or ideally a video. Ah, the video's going to be a little bit tricky because obviously you can't film stuff that doesn't exist. 
which is why there's no videos of Nicki Minaj displaying any discernible talent on YouTube, but slightly fuzzy images which are just about clear enough to make out that it's a rat, but have just enough motion blur to mask the fact that it's a fake? Sure, I can do that! Let's head down to the Photoshop! I prefaced the following by saying, yeah, these photos aren't great, and that I was panicking at the time. I didn't want to send over a whole load of photos that were too good to be true, just enough that she could verify the plausibility of this one. So the first one I sent Olivia was a really dark one, but you can make out that it is a rat by the paw curling around the edge of the table. Then I sent her this blurry one, and another blurry one of the rat and the camera at a different angle, which is actually fairly elaborate. And then I waited. Ah, oh, sadly I'd lost her. She wasn't convinced and thought it looked like a chinchilla. Oh well, I guess that's the end of our fun here, but never mind, I've got other things on my list that I, I need to go and screw with, so... Oh, hello. What's this? Hi, Zeke, this is Janet calling from... Um, we've just got your rat pictures and I just want to talk to you a bit more about them if I can. Can you give me a call back? It is 0207 29... That was a different journalist from the same newspaper. What's going on? I called her back and she seemed genuinely interested in the story, despite me subtly trying to warn her that I was playing fast and loose with the truth. Listen closely, you'll hear a few clues. It's also your cat is very brave because my cat would not go anywhere near anything like that. So, yeah, um... she's got balls of steel, I'll give her that. So, what happened was, okay. I was lying on the couch and I heard all this commotion going on in the kitchen. So I jump up and... I'm just... Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't get any more photos or, or video. I'm just... Mm. I'm not good with rats anyway and it was a big whopper. I, I didn't want to hang around. Yeah, no, so... I would have screamed and run in the opposite direction. Um, are we alright to use them on the website? We had a great little chat and I furnished her with details of my cat who ironically was terrible at killing anything in life but was now apparently doing a print-worthy job of it in death. Oh, was I pushing things too far? Surely this story reeked to high heaven. Just an update that the website will publish after the paper. So fingers crossed they make it in tonight and then the rat will get its moment in the spotlight. Until then, if you can take any more pics or video, let us know as that would be great. The very next morning I happily skipped to the shop to buy a paper. My cat wasn't in it. Uh oh. I got back to my desk and had an email from another journalist at the paper asking me to call him. Uh-oh. You talk to like you've got a nest. Yeah, you've got a I nest wonder me. if that was the mother. I mean, I don't know, I don't know much about rats. I don't know whether the females get bigger yeah. than the males. No, I, but... I do, actually, because we, we had a problem with them last year. It's really stressful, yeah. isn't it? My nerves are absolutely Yeah, they're difficult free. to get... Yeah, they're tricky to get rid of. Yeah. Tricky um... little blighters. We had them under the floor. <laughs> oh, that's nice. You've got wood flooring. We exchanged pleasantries and talked about rats for quite some time, with him not really getting to the point of the conversation. And then he got to the point of the conversation. And then I wish he hadn't gotten to the point of the conversation. They wanted to send over a photographer to my house that afternoon. And to my abstract horror, I was surprised to hear myself agreeing with this. I pretended like I only had a very specific half hour window that was going to be available before I had to go off to some imaginary job somewhere, hoping it would be too inconvenient for them and they would just run the story anyway. After all, I am in the middle of nowhere in the arse end of the country. Foolproof, right? No. Flaw on the plan, idiot. They're a national newspaper. They've got photographers everywhere. It was at my door within an hour. So we walked around my house and garden taking photos of me with concerned face and scared face and me with tabloid sensationalist newspaper face etc etc. You actually looked towards me and just as if saying that's where it was. Okay. You, you, you with me? Yeah. Yeah. While we were doing that, he was asking a whole load of questions, and to my credit, I answered them all without any hesitation. But God, the amount of nonsense that was just spilling out of my mouth hole was never ending. What do you do? Uh, I work at a restaurant, but in nursing. Uh, okay. And it's only part time, studying at the same time. Right, so. yeah, right. Where are you studying? Uh, agriculture. Oh, really? It's more agriculture management, I'm kind of yeah, yeah. going for. Yeah. 
we're in the right area. Yeah, it's just something I've always been interested in, but it's only since moving down to the country I thought, you know what, I'll just do it. Just... Oh, okay, I'm a student of agriculture. Apparently, that's news to me. What the... Where the hell did that come from? But here's the thing. The main picture he had travelled to come take was of me holding the cat that had battled a rodent monster. Uh-oh. Should we have a look at your garden? Yes, yes. Hopefully the cat will be around. Yeah, we might be looking for quite some time, buddy. So my cat had been dead for two weeks at this point, and in all likelihood would continue to be dead for many more weeks to come. But that didn't stop us walking around my garden like idiots for 15 minutes, calling for an animal who had recently been given a permanent vaccination against life. All the time I was panicking, thinking, I hope to God my neighbor doesn't come out and ask why myself and a photographer are calling for a cat that she knows I had had put down. I hope she didn't see any of that. She must think I'm insane. Anyway, lo and behold, the cat must have been out hunting rodents for the day. I apologised for the inconvenience and he said, oh no worries, just send me some decent photos of the cat. I said I would and kicked him out the door before having a minor heart attack. And now we come to the reason why I nearly didn't make this video. The ending. It's a bit like me having promised you guys tiramisu for dessert and then plonking a kale smoothie down on the table. After all that, they didn't run the story. And I don't even know why. Maybe the photographer realised afterwards that something wasn't quite right about the whole thing. Or, or maybe the journalists remembered that they were journalists and took the two seconds necessary to Google my unique name and learn that I was the clown prince of YouTube. I don't know. So, sorry guys, but that's kind of the end of my rat tale. But I figured I'd take one final swing at it. You may remember Olivia, the journalist from earlier who thought that this looked like a chinchilla and wanted some video evidence to back up my story. Well, I emailed her back. Thanks for watching. Dear Olivia, you may remember a couple of weeks ago I shared some pictures of the gigantic rat in my kitchen. Unfortunately, you weren't able to use them, and I fully understand that decision based on the quality of the images. But it felt more like my integrity and honesty was being called into question at the time. This pains me greatly. I have since been able to capture video evidence, as requested, which will hopefully assuage any fears that my story was any less than genuine. I present to you, unedited, clear footage of the rat in question. I trust this will settle the matter. Hope you have a great day. Best, Zeke. Uh, this is video for Olivia. It's back. I've just seen it through the kitchen window. It's huge. I'm going to try and get it on, on video for you just so you can God help us all!